My fellow Corolla E210 enthusiasts, welcome back. I am Alex the Car Guy, and this is my Corolla E210 hatchback. Now, I have already installed the Costco front stabilizer bar. So if you have seen that video and you're wondering what about the rear one, I finally have it. It is just as gorgeous as the front one in that beautiful blue Costco color nice and heavy, very, very solid. This is a solid bar versus the one stock, which happens to be hollow. And it comes with a, a couple of replacement bushings that will replace the original bushings and two aluminum brackets or spacers that will also be added in there. Now on the ends, you can see on here that there is only one hole. Some stabilizers bars have two holes on them and that allows the bar to be adjustable if you want it hard or soft. This particular bar does not have two holes, just one position, so it is set at that <laughs> stiffness and that is it which is fine for me i am not a professional racer so i don't i wouldn't even know the difference between hard and soft unless you're really that fine-tuned to your car where you're able to tell the small changes now this bar is 26 millimeters in diameter so it is thicker than stock uh, Costco says 125% improvement over stock and through to its heritage so its japanese heritage the instructions are all in Japanese like the last time. And I don't read Japanese. I would love to be able to read Japanese. They have beautiful illustrations here. So I have consulted with my good friend Google and translated these instructions so I can install the bar. So I'm gonna remove the old bar. I'm gonna show it to you and compare it to the Costco bar so we can see the difference in terms of the size and its weight. And then I'm gonna show you the whole installation process. Then at the end, we're gonna take it around for a test drive and see what, what my final thoughts on this are. Now, as always, I have placed a link in the description down below to the tools that you'll see me use on this video to install the bar. And I have also placed a link to this bar if you like to look at this further or get one for yourself, as well as a discount code to help you save a little bit of money when ordering parts from Cami Speed. And by the way, I wanna send a huge thank you to Cami Speed for providing me this this bar to review. But with that being said, let's get started. And like any job, this begins by lifting the car. <laughs> and when I did the other video, I had several people ask me what kind of jack this is. This is actually the quick jack system. And I wish I had actually bought this sooner. I used, I used regular stands and regular jacks to lift the car every time I worked on it. And they take longer than the quick jack system. This actually feels safer and it has two different heights. Right now, this is the lower height and as you can see, there's a lot of room for me to get underneath the car. And the second height actually goes very, very high, which I rarely use. That's probably the height to bring down a transmission. So it's super convenient and I actually wish I had bought it earlier. Now, the other thing about that quick jack system is that when I was looking at lift systems from my garage, I was looking at a post system. Post systems can take up a lot of space in the garage because where are you gonna put them when they're not being used if you buy the ones that can be rolled around and if you buy the ones that are stationary they require to be bolted to the floor now this concrete has to have a certain thickness for you to be able to safely bolt on a lift while you could bolt it it may not be safe so when I looked at my thickness of the concrete and calculated well I'm gonna have to pay somebody to pour special foundation for that lift and the lift is gonna be bolted to the ground Around. I'm gonna end up with bolts in there. What if I ever move? It just gets very complicated very quick versus the quick jack system. So first, let me give you an overview of where the bar is located. As you can see, I'm in the rear of the vehicle. Here's the muffler. And if I move in towards the inside, the bar is right here. And if I follow that, the bar is connected to each end of the wheel. And you can see that right here. And same thing on the other side, there's an identical bolt. Now the bar is held with this bracket. Now the bracket has two bolts right here. There's one bolt right here and there's one bolt underneath this tube. Now what is this tube? Well, this is the TV Performance rear brace, which is awesome by the way, but it happens to block access to the bolt that I need to remove to get the stabilizer bar. <laughs> so I unfortunately, I didn't have a choice in what order I will receive or install these parts on, but if you have a choice of what order to install them on, I would say make sure that the stabilizer bar is installed first 
before the TV performance bar. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in the situation that I am where I'm gonna have to remove the brace, install the stabilizer bar, then reinstall the brace. So this is what it normally looks like without the TV performance brace. I have a clear shot of both of these bolts, which are standard 14 millimeter bolts, which I'm gonna reach with this little extension here. Back the guy off. Bracket comes off. And there's this is rubber bushing. Now I gotta repeat this process for the other side. Now this is interesting. As I started to remove the brackets, I noticed that the bar is actually under tension because it's being pulled by this. So notice how it's kind of going this way. I can't get readily to the bolt unless I push the bar this way. And here comes the last bolt. <laughs> Now notice that the bar is still trapped in here because it is still connected to each end so I'm gonna remove this nut next. Now I have placed a 17 millimeter wrench over here to keep the bolt from spinning while I loosen up this nut right here which is also a 17 millimeter nut and just like that this guy is out. So all I gotta do now is repeat this for the other side. So I have removed both of the nuts on the driver and passenger side and now the only thing that's holding this bar in place is the actual bolt on both sides. So all I gotta do is turn it and I'm using my 17 inch ratcheting wrench and eventually the bolt will be all the way out. And here we go. <laughs> okay, now I gotta do this for the other side. And I noticed this, that as soon as one side is freed up and the bar can move, I don't even have to even turn this bolt. I can literally just push the bar out and there it is. Because now the bar can slide in the opposite way. And these things have a little bit of movement on too, so I can press on them and get clearance that way. So let's get this bar out. And if you're on the stock exhaust like I am, you'll notice that the tube is on this side. So that means that the bar is gonna come out this way towards the driver's side. And that also means that this is the way that we're gonna bring in the Costco bar. I'm gonna bring in the Costco bar in this direction towards the passenger side. And here are both of the stabilizer bars side by side. And you can see obviously <laughs> the Costco one stands out right away because of that gorgeous blue color that I can't get enough of, especially because the car is blue, so it happens to match. This is 26 millimeters and I measured the OM1, it measures 24 millimeters. Two millimeter difference, that's where we get the 25% increase in rigidity, but also the original one is hollow. Now that's obviously because it's cheaper to make and it's lighter, so it's better for fuel economy, not ideal for performance. This thing is solid. So this feels very solid and has weight to it with this feels flimsy and if it's flimsy when there's torsion from the suspension the bar is gonna twist and it's not gonna have the best desired effect however if it's solid and larger that torsion is a force to require to twist it it's a lot higher so this is gonna maintain a lot of more stability and better suspension geometry. There is a little bit of grease on here and on here, and that is normal. Normally we put grease on bushings so when they rub against metal, they don't make noise or they don't bind. However, on the Costco one, there is no grease whatsoever. I actually pulled this uh, portion bushing out out of the bracket and there is no grease in there. Now there is such a thing as what they call self-lubricating bushings, but I always like to have actual real grease in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of suspension grease to those before I install them over into the bar. Now, as you can see, I have separated the rubber. I just pulled it off the bracket and then I apply a thin layer of grease in here and a thin layer of grease on this rubber portion. And then I'm just gonna reinsert it in here. I'm also gonna apply a little bit of grease on the inside of this bushing. As you can see, it has a little slit. So uh, the bar is gonna slide in there and it's gonna be lubricated as well. Now, both bushings have been lubricated and installed over the bar. And this is gonna be sandwiched in between the frame and the actual brackets is gonna look like this. Now I do wanna be careful because when I have this bar up in and I'm underneath the car, the metal portion can still pop off. So I gotta be careful it doesn't hit me in the noggin. <laughs> but I'm gonna put this back on here and let's move to the bottom of the car. So as you can see, I brought in the bar from the driver's side towards the passenger side and it went in this way. And then eventually it went this way and then I got it to pop into this bolt. That was fairly easy. The bolt for the other side now 
won't pop in as easily. I have to turn it with the wrench. If you remember, I had to back that uh, bolt to get this bar out. Now I gotta do the same process in reverse. I gotta drive the bolt in and keep turning this until the bolt protrudes far enough where I can put the nut. And here you can see how the bolt finally came through and I can reinstall the original nut. And now with the wrench still attached to the other end so I can keep the bolt from turning, I'm gonna torque down both the passenger and driver side to spec. And as a small side note, putting the bar into place does get the bar a little bit scratched up and some of the paint might get damaged because there's a lot of sharp areas around here. Now, if we wanted to minimize that, we could wrap the bar in painter's tape before putting it in here, or perhaps put some rags or plastic around here to reduce the amount of scratching that the bar will see in the installation process. I have just installed these 14 millimeter bolts by hand to make sure I don't cross thread them. And you'll see the aluminum piece is sandwiched in between the chassis of the car and the bracket. Now that the bolts have been inserted by hand and I know that they're not cross threaded, I can use tools to tighten them up before torquing them. So if you recall, when I removed bolt brackets on the original bar, the bar came down because it's under pressure from both of the ends being torqued down. So now for me to reinstall this bracket on here, while one side goes in easy, this one does not go in as easy. And obviously that's gonna depend on whichever one I do first. The second one's gonna be harder because I have to push the bar up so I can install the screws into place. Now I can press up against the screw with my body force, but I found the easiest way to do it just to shove something to push it up towards the chassis and then I can insert the bolt. And that seemed to do the trick while well, having this push up and then I can install the bolts by hand to make sure I don't cross thread them before I torque them down. And now the last step is to torque both of these nuts to spec on both sides, passenger and driver. And I do wanna show you what this thing looks like when now that it's installed. Man, this thing looks so nice. It's almost a shame that you don't get to see this part once the car is in the ground, but look at that beautiful but very briefly before we go on the test drive i did want to show you that the tv performance rear brace is compatible with the sway bar and i say that because the sway bar obviously we got a larger bracket set up here and obviously a larger sway bar but there's still in plenty of clearance in between both of them so if you're thinking of getting both of these items they are definitely compatible with each other and we are driving with the rear Costco sway bar installed and i haven't heard any unusual noises normally sometimes when you already change suspension components uh, you start to get additional noises that were not there before so far i haven't heard anything now if you recall i did add additional grease to the bushings to, to help with any potential binding but right it is as smooth as when the car was original and that is one of the big advantages of doing sway bars before doing lowering springs or any kind of coilover system typically lowering a car will uh, reduce body roll but at the expense of ride quality we're gonna get a very bumpy ride a lot of extra noise and the sway bars provide less body roll more control without adding any additional extra sound or noise or harness to vibration to the right. Now, when you're driving straight, you don't feel whatsoever any change on a sway bar. The real difference comes when you are turning and you could potentially get away with only installing one of the sway bars. Perhaps you only install the rear or you only start install the front. But once you do one, you, you almost wanna do the second one. I, I don't see any way around it. You remember these setups are made or develop jointly so they are they're developed as a set but as I mentioned earlier whenever you're talking about performance parts you're really only gonna see the benefits of them the full benefits at a track or at some kind of competition event driving around town you're probably not gonna feel much difference except that the car does feel a little bit sportier but if you ever decide to take your car to the track or competition you'll know you have the parts to go as fast as you can possibly can. And also additionally, the sway bars do provide additional stability. So taking a turn perhaps in a freeway exit or entrance will be a little bit safer, will feel more stable than with the original stock sway bars, which are very flimsy. But here's also why I think it makes sense to install the sway bar kit. 
the price is fairly affordable for what you get, the quality of the part that you get, and also the fact that they're literally bolt-on parts, the rear one especially. Now the front one is a little bit more intense than the rear, but not so much in the grand scheme of things. There are aftermarket parts out there that require you to modify or cut your you know, bumper or some part of the car. This one's literally bolt on and can come off at any given point in time. So for example, we can see that whenever they bring up a new model that's a sportier version than one before, the very first thing that the engineers attack is the suspension. They give you bigger sway bars. Sometimes they give you an increased stiffness on springs or maybe different size of wheels, but that's what you are changing, the core geometry of the suspension of the car because that changes primarily the feel of when you are driving out and about or when you are driving a little bit on the sporty side. And I can't wait to see what they put on the upcoming Corolla GR, but I bet you some of those improvements are gonna be suspension, sway bars, bushings, all that good stuff, because you know it has been proven, tried, and it works. So if you guys have any other questions regarding the installation of the bars, please put that in the comments down below. Remember, I placed the link in the description. Also, if you wanna acquire one of these bars for yourself, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>